Okay, so I had started to use an overlay layer to add a shadow underneath my creature. So if I take that, that gray layer, I'll just redo it so you can see. What I do is I go down to my most foreground landscape layer from my original file, and that's these rocks, right? And then I make a new layer, and I can go up to layer and say new layer there. It's a new blank layer, or I could use the little post-it thing next to the trash can within the layer window. Now I'm going to fill that layer with, with middle gray. So I say edit fill, and the what I choose is gray, normal mode, 100%. solid gray layer. On top of that layer, I have my texture fills, my creature, and my crystal. So anything I do to that gray layer will affect everything underneath it, but not above it. So I'm going to set this layer now to overlay, and that way it makes it invisible, because overlay only shows things that are lighter or darker then 50% gray. Then I can use the dodge and burn direct tools. And I can burn the shadow. But instead of having to burn the different landscape elements, like burn the rocks in a certain way, I'm just burning on that non-destructive overlay layer. And it will affect everything underneath. But because my creature and that one crystal are in front of it, and I've already dodged and burned the, that leg, I don't need to worry about it. Now, I always use burn at an exposure that's less than 30, and I'll always start on the midtones. But you might notice that as I'm burning this shadow, I can turn on and off the overlay layer, and you can see how that dark shape works. But I can also take the opacity down on that overlay layer, and I can vary how dark that I want that shadow to be. So maybe about there. I think 100% works. Now, is there any other aspect of the ground and the rock? Like right there needs to be burned a little bit. So that, right at the belly. So I'm going to switch from midtones to highlights to knock down some of those bright lights. But because it's all on this overlay layer, if I turn it to normal, this is what it looks like. It's going to be pretty subtle in how it does it. Because it's just overlaying on top of that landscape. If I need to make real changes, then I do need to go, you know, beyond just lightening and darkening, then I need to go to the landscape itself. So for instance, I can now go to that rock layer. Maybe I'll do it as a duplicate. And I can do things like, and this is a new uh, option, if I think it got too colorful when I burned it, because sometimes that can happen, underneath the dodge and burn tool is the sponge tool. And the sponge tool either saturates something or desaturates something. So I want to desaturate at less than 30 flow with a soft edged large eraser or a large uh, brush, just like with Dodge and Burn. And then I just want to take some of the color away. That doesn't seem to do a darn thing. So let's try a stronger flow. 
You know, it definitely works over here. You see that? So I think that's just a different layer. Sure enough. So one of these. This is where um, turning your layers on and off really helps. So I find the layer, then I can desaturate that a bit. And then when I go back to my overlay layer and I burn with it, it might saturate it a little bit, but it won't oversaturate it. And then if I can't burn it enough, I can always go to the layer directly. Because overlay layer can only burn within 50%. And then maybe I'll use the sponge tool a little bit. So these are, you know, really careful color adjustments to make th make sure things match. And then burn it a little bit more at the crevice. So we're getting more and more refined in how we use these tools. Instead of doing it just overall, we're doing it individually in different spots. And this helps match the character's lighting, the creature's lighting, as well as the setting. And as I'm burning, I might want to burn on the crystal a little bit. And then I might decide I want to dodge the highlight on the crystal a little bit. but I get to choose where. So by using dodge and burn, we get to choose where to bring the emphasis. And again, I recommend you do it below 30 because it's a little too strong otherwise. I feel like when I do the um, dodging and burning of the gray light to create a cast shadow, I'm barely seeing anything show up. Yeah, it can only it can only shift it up to 50%. So if you want to go darker than that, then you want to go to the the layer directly. But you can see how much that overlay layer makes a difference. Right. Now, now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it to the creature. So I'm going to do an overlay layer on the creature, but just the creature. So this is a little complex, but really interesting and very helpful. So I'm going to make a new layer above the creature. I'm going to fill it with gray. So edit, fill, gray. Before I turn it to overlay mode, I want to turn it off, go to my creature layer, and select the empty space around my creature. And I'm actually going to uncheck contiguous and have a zero pixel feather. And the reason I uncheck contiguous is just in case there was any like little uh, cutout of empty space that I had missed, right? I want it to fully cut out my creature. Then I'm going to move that selection to my gray overlay layer. I'll erase, uh, turn off the crystal so it doesn't confuse you. Then I'm going to delete. So that now I have an overlay layer. And this is the thing now. Right? But this is a direct pixel clipping mask. It's not something I had to draw with the pen tool or anything. And now I'm going to turn that to overlay. And that mask then lets me dodge and burn just my creature to fit the lighting of the scene. You did that with the lasso tool? No, I did it with the magic wand. So I, the magic wand is very good at selecting empty pixels. Because remember, my, my creature layer has no pixels around it. So I just click on the no pixels with the magic wand. I'll do it again with contiguous turned off and a zero feather. And that will select the 
and you, you have your creature layer selected, right? Yeah, so I, I select it on the creature layer, but then you can move the selection to your your new overlay layer and then just delete from it. So as I dodge and burn on that, here's some dodging. Of course, it can't dodge and burn where there are no pixels. So this way you get a nice clean, clean edge between the effects you do on your creature and your landscape. So that's a targeted mask, overlay mask. Let's see, I want to overlay mode. So you can see I dodged the tail a little bit to show up. And then I can decide, oh, I want to dodge this horn a little bit to show up better. And this is what, if you worked professionally, you know, kind of matching effects into a scene, into the lighting of a scene, you spend a lot of your time doing this kind of stuff because it takes a lot of time to get it right. Here, I'm just trying to introduce you to it. And then I'm going to burn as well. I'm going to burn under the jaw. Burn on the inside of the leg a little bit. Burn on this foot. But so you make your selection and then you, um, you fill it with gray or something? So I first made a layer solid gray, just like I did for the landscape. Then I cut out from it. So I'll, I'll do it again just so you can see. Go on top of your creature or click on your creature layer. Make a new layer, new blank layer. Yeah, your gray layer. Fill that layer with gray at normal mode. Then turn that layer off. Click on your creature layer. Use the magic wand to select the empty space around your creature. Go back to your, your new gray overlay layer, right? And then just hit delete. And then deselect. And now you have a mask for your creature so that you can set that to overlay mode and dodge and burn right on top of it and will only affect your creature. Okay, next. I'm very close to finishing. Because I've rasterized my creature, of course, I should play with its levels, its color balance. That's easier than trying to play with the, the levels and the color balance of the setting itself. I think I'll limit the shadows a little tiny bit. Maybe deepen the midtones. Maybe limit the highlights just a tiny bit. Then I can play with the color balance. This is just fine tuning in the midtones. Touch more green in there. Touch more blue. Because there's a lot of purple light in this scene. And then I could try hue saturation, but it's probably going to be too big a change. But I shifted a little bit to each side. And now I think I'm pretty good. But the overall saturation, do I want to take it down? Do I want it to go higher? To help my creature show up a little bit, maybe I'll, I'll saturate it a little bit more. And then with those adjustments made, I can go to my, my um, creature overlay mask, right? And just continue dodging and burning it. I want to burn underneath the tail. 